There is a plethora of misinformation about the coronavirus on the web and social media. Now, because of this, and to stop the spread of false information, Wikipedia and the World Health Organization have announced a collaboration to stem the tide of misinformation. The WHO will grant the free online encyclopedia, Wikipedia, free use of its published information, its graphics, its videos. This, of course, is to allow the information to be reposted widely into almost 200 different languages. It comes on the back of the fact that Wikipedia is celebrating 20 years of existence. To tell us more, joined by Wikimedia CEO Catherine Mayer, all the way from San Francisco in the United States' West Coast, where I believe that the time is quarter past nine yesterday. It's good to have you. <laughs> it's wonderful good to be here. Good morning to all of your viewers. <laughs> I cannot believe it's already 20 years of Wikipedia. I mean, this is quite incredible to actually think about it. I mean, just by saying it, I sort of think back and, and remember when it was launched. And, uh, you know, it's been an amazing journey, one can imagine. I mean, you obviously know a lot about it. Talk to us. It is. It's remarkable. You know, we started 20 years ago as a bit of an experimental project, this idea that anyone could create an encyclopedia on the internet for free for everyone to be able to access. And here we are today, 20 years later, in 300 plus languages with representation from everyone on the globe. Um, many of the South African uh, languages as well, a very robust South African presence as it is. Uh, and such a resource that so many people, hundreds of millions of people turn to every single month. So it, perhaps a happy accident that succeeded beyond our wildest expectations. Yeah, I mean, I, I remember when I was at school and studying, it was still those days of going out and pulling out the encyclopedia and having the, um, you know, Britannica or whatever it may be, and then having to go to a library and look. And, and then now, you know, I don't, I mean, when you try, when I try and explain that to my children, they think like, they have no idea what I'm talking about. But, you know, <laughs> the, the, the introduction of a free encyclopedia on the internet, where did the actual idea stem from? Yeah, the idea is our founder, Jimmy Wales. He uh, is uh, American from Alabama in the United States and really believed very passionately in the importance of, of general purpose information and saw the early internet as an opportunity to take something that is a concept that many of us know from our libraries and make it something that was available in a digital form. So. 20 years ago, he had this idea, and I think he would be the first to say it. It certainly took off in an unexpected way. And like you, I remember having encyclopedias, so it's pretty remarkable to me to consider how much the paradigm has really shifted for so many hundreds of millions, if not billions of people around the world to have access to this now. Yeah, it's amazing how your encyclopedia have now become like a piece of art. They just sit on a bookshelf and <laughs> they look good in Zoom calls. That's probably about it. But, you know, if we if we look at the, the age that we're living in, and, it, and it's, it's a reality, is the fact that we are in an age of fake news and it is becoming everywhere. Everywhere you turn, it's happening. Wikipedia has been criticized for allowing anyone to edit a subject page. Academics and universities, you know, here, as we experience the South African reference, uh, talk to the fact that that's not a good thing because you can't reference it. Tell us about it from, you know, Wikipedia's point of view. So, I mean, I would start with a very similar thing to many university professors. When I was a student, we couldn't cite an encyclopedia. We had to go to the second, the, the sources, and, and we would say the same at Wikipedia. We're not meant to be a resource for deeper research. We're meant to be the first place that you start learning. And that's actually a conversation that we've had with educators around the globe is really, how do you think about using Wikipedia as the first stop in your learning journey? But, but never the last, it's why we're designed to be open open and connected to other resources around the web. We really think of Wikipedia as a tool that helps facilitate broader public understanding of so many different topics. But certainly, we also really encourage this deeper learning that we absolutely support. Uh, you know, there's, there's teachers and professors and thinking about as well. Yeah, I mean, because then, then it, it sort of puts a question mark on reliability, because uh, there are. And, and then, I mean, if we, we can 
you know, talk quite openly and honestly. You know, there have been times when I've been onto Wikipedia preparing for an interview and, and then I ask the person or the individual the question and they're like, you got that off Wikipedia, didn't you? That that actually didn't happen. <laughs> so that that is a, it's a bit of an alarm bell and that, that is a bit worrying. You know, how, how can Wikipedia actually try and change to prevent this misinformation? I, I'm so glad you asked that question. I think there, it's a bit of a nuanced answer, so forgive me. Uh, generally speaking, first of all, we say, please read Wikipedia with a critical eye. We consider ourselves a work in progress. Part of the strength of Wikipedia is that anyone can contribute to it, which is why it is so large and wide ranging. But that also means at times that we don't get always everything right, which is why we say checklist citations, that's what they're there for. I think what I would actually suggest is, is for your viewers today is that Sometimes the reason Wikipedia isn't as accurate as it could be is we don't have enough contributors to Wikipedia. When we come to sort of international topics that are of great import, like the coronavirus pandemic, which we started talking out talking about today, mm. the, high, the quality of articles is tremendously high. There's so many people paying attention to it. The bigger challenge that we have is actually around um, topics or individuals that perhaps don't have as many contributors or as many viewers of. And that's where having editors, particularly South African editors, who can speak to local politicians, cultural icons, pop stars even, is so critically important to help us make sure that Wikipedia is as accurate as possible for as many parts of the world and experiences as we can think of. All right, so let's actually talk about this accurate information because this is where, um, as we began the conversation with regard to coronavirus and all of these, uh, you know, false information that is doing the round, fake news, conspiracy theories, you, you've partnered with the WHO um, and, you know, this of course is a, it's a big partnership. Uh, they will license for free all their data on COVID-19. Obviously not all of it, but the, the, the ones that we have mentioned. Talk to us a bit more about this partnership now. We're thrilled about this partnership and we think that it represents the beginning of many similar institutional partnerships. At the beginning of the pandemic, we are already aware that Wikipedia is widely used by medical professionals and by uh, members of the general public for medical information. And this is particularly true in places where perhaps access to information in your own language or uh, having access to sort of a diversity of media sources is more challenging. And so we wanted to ensure that the information about the pandemic was as high quality as possible at a time when we really didn't know much about this virus. And so there was a real demand for information. We reached out to the WHO among other institutions uh, to be able to say, hey, look, we've got this resource that so many hundreds of millions of people around the globe are using. You have this phenomenal information that is critical to public health. How can we partner together to make sure that the information on our sites is as accurate as possible and that we're using our billion visitors a month to disseminate the information that we know is actually critical to all of our well-being? That was really the genesis of it. And today, with WHO article uh, images and data help illustrate and bring to life a thousand 7,000 articles across Wikipedia's, uh, as you mentioned, 200 languages covering the COVID-19 pandemic. Mm, amazing. Uh, can you edit this information on, on, on the pages or is, that, is this something that cannot be touched? No, uh, actually, <laughs> actually, anyone can edit Wikipedia. It's one of the strengths it's of Even the this model. information. However, the world health well, so that was what I was going to say. Okay. Yeah, so, okay. so anyone can edit Wikipedia, but there are some articles that have advanced sort of protections to ensure that the information is as accurate as possible. So these tend to be things like national leaders, information about a pandemic, breaking news events, for example. Uh, and in those sorts of articles, what is generally the case is that you actually have to propose an edit to the article and it has to be accepted by other editors uh, who scrutinize it to ensure that it is accurate, well verified before it goes forward. So generally speaking, if you're editing, say, about a garage band from your local neighborhood, it's that is an edit that can be published directly to the site. When it comes to things that are of tremendous import in our day and discourse, uh, there, tend, there are a few other protections that help ensure that that information is yeah. well vetted before it goes forward. Yeah. Uh, Catherine, finally, as I let you go, there's obviously, um, you're, you're still in the US, uh, you know, either celebrating or mourning the, the win or loss or whichever team you're on, it doesn't matter, but 
there is a new president and uh, Joe Biden also putting a big standpoint in terms of fake news that is doing the rounds and 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 also pledging support back to the World Health Organization also talking about the news mm -hmm. about elections and whether it's fake news and all that's being spread I mean how, how does Wikipedia and Wikimedia help in terms of pushing forward this mandate so we are very invested in providing the best possible information to the public that integrates even differing and difficult perspectives so that we're able to offer the basis of context for conversation. Uh, we obviously take great pride in presenting only the most accurate and highly verified information uh, in order to help inform that public discourse. And so from our perspective for 20 years now, we've really been seeking to ensure that folks have access to, to the most accurate information as possible. So while we are not a political institution in any way, shape or means, we are delighted to partner to uh, not partner with, but support and come alongside anyone who's interested in, in ensuring that there is a renewed public focus on high quality information um, for the globe. We feel as though that's yeah. actually the best way for us to be able to begin conversations in order to take on our most pressing public challenges right now, whether these are issues of climate change or racial reconciliation or the future of our economic system coming out of this pandemic. So, you know, there are many different things that all of us uh, have the opportunity to dig into that affect our lives and livelihoods and uh, we believe that knowledge is the place to start. All right let's leave it there Catherine thanks so much for talking to us. Uh, Wikimedia CEO Catherine Mayer, uh, Wikipedia on the 15th of January turning 20 years old and partnering with the World Health Organization to stem the tide of misinformation about the coronavirus and uh, COVID-19 will grant free online usage, that's the WHO on COVID-19, of its published information, graphics and videos. All right.